this on Antarctica. Antarctica has the world's leading scientific and religious leaders going down there for some unusual uh, findings that have been there. Well, in my book that I wrote called uh, Empire Beneath the Ice, How the Nazis Won World War II, I know who they're meeting with. Because even though Admiral Byrd, people can argue with his diary, the extreme measures that these global controllers use to kill to kill, ladies and gentlemen, anybody that would come forth with the truth in those days was beyond understanding. James Forrestal was thrown out of, and God bless him, his main concern was to tell the American people what was really going on in Antarctica and what they had found. So imagine this, imagine a skilled group of individuals controlling the world's money, being able to hide their presence and being able to hide it since 1947 and look up Operation High Jump, or better yet, I believe everyone should, and, and of course this is a pitch, but it's a necessary pitch. If you don't understand Operation High Jump, if you don't understand the empire beneath the ice, you won't understand why everybody is down there from the Pope, Putin, uh, 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 the ex-entity in the White House, all those guys have gone down there the religious leaders, uh, uh, oh, good night, Patriarch Krill, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, one of our former astronauts been down there and he had an episode down there where he had to get carted out or flown out to New Zealand. I've talked to scientists who've been down there. Marcus Wolf, the head of the East German Stasi, which was considered the best intelligence gathering organization in the world, was hired by our government to build self-directed intelligence dossiers. They just had a different levels, like a pyramid structure, and everybody reported to the top. It's the same way now. People are living in a world that is totally the Matrix. So when the Matrix movies came out, people thought, well, that's just science fiction. Uh-uh, it is a Matrix, but it's a Matrix of truth. Your iPhone, you realize that iPhone, that is your, if you will, projected identity now? Satan, through his cohorts on earth, using the intelligence agencies of the world, are having each and every one of us who are on an iPhone building our own dossiers. Building our own dossiers. People are losing their human identity. They are losing their human identity. And they are becoming, if you will, already assimilated. Through transhumanism, you are building a control mechanism or you are generating the control mechanism that they will use over you. So I want to say one thing too that's critical before I get into some digital immortality. Do you understand that Dr. Mengele at the 1947 mark was able to twin 20. He could produce twins. 20. Do you also understand that and this is going to be hard for a lot of you to take that cloning, human cloning, was perspected in the 60s. What's my source for that? Multiple intelligence agents, deathbed and a couple of them. I wasn't at their deathbed, but they, they wanted to clear their concept before they died. Again, you will not be able to understand this unless you pray about it. Those of you who have a hunger for truth, imagine that every important figure in the world has the ability to be duplicated, okay? If you understand how we age as human beings, the biological processes that have to take place, the mitochondrial acceleration, all that, I was told they can take a person at any age within nine months, not for normal gestation, but they, that's what they can do. The frequency of life, all the mysteries are coming into their control. They want to be God, but they're not. So the real God is going to come into war and is at war and has been at war since the Garden of Eden. Was God taken by surprise in the Garden of Eden? No, he had already planned in the very Genesis chapter three that, that he was going to send a redeemer because if we were left to our own devices, we would simply cease to exist. But remember this, we were created in the image and likeness of God. Well, that made a lot of angels, at least a third of them, pretty upset. And ancient history teaches that 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 Lucifer became so furious, Lucifer became uh, became Satan when he got thrown out of heaven. Oh, how art thou fallen? Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, you know? The idea is that 
God in his all omnipresent knowledge and everything, he knew it was going to take place. Someone said, why did he let him do it in the first place? Because angels have free will too. So a third of the angels bought the lie and the third of the angels rebelled against God. The singularity, it's that transhumanist revenge when everybody becomes assimilated into the board. It, the other way to look at it is the hive mentality. You have the queen bee and all the worker bees work for the purpose of the queen bee for the hive. Same thing with singularity. Singularity is simply this when men and machines merge. Remember what I said about uh, what happens if you've got a disembodied spirit that embodies in an inanimate object, causing it to be animate? These are headlines, a new kind of eternal life, the growing Christian transhumanist movement. Transhumanism is just another religion in which man seeks to become God. We're fighting for the soul of humanity. There should be a movement against transhumanism. Unfortunately, Christians who should believe that God in his redemption and through the restoration by faith in Jesus Christ is what makes us what we should have been had sin not entered the human race, but transhumanism now, uh, the growing Christian transhumanism movement. That is so contrary to the understanding of the Bible. Transhumanism will be sold in a very marketable and lovely way. Who doesn't want somebody else to walk that's lost a limb? Who doesn't want somebody to see that's lost an eye? Who doesn't want a paraplegic not to be a paraplegic anymore? I know that sounds noble, but it's gonna kill you. And not just in this life, but eternally. Reverend claims AI have souls and can be saved by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for his creation and not their creation. This guy is basically saying that robots can be saved, you know? Well, they can't because they're not creating the image and likeness of the living God. They're shaking their fist at heaven, saying you didn't do a good enough job, God. Artificial intelligence is the ultimate assault on that which God has created. The Metro spiritual, creating superhumans through transhumanism is becoming a reality. AI and transhumanism could quest for superintelligence and eternal life lead to a dystopian nightmare? The question I'm asked over and over by people all over the world is why giants? Why giants? Why is this so important? Because ladies and gentlemen, the giants and their fathers, the fallen angels, have infected the entire human race. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna share a couple things that have been written that I think are really critical. And it was it's it's this one's coming from the Dakes Bible. It was a purpose of Satan and his fallen angels to corrupt the human race and thereby do away with pure Adamic stock, through whom the seed of the woman should come. This would advert their own doom and make it possible for Satan and his kingdom to keep control of planet Earth indefinitely. It was said to Adam and Eve that the seed of the woman should defeat Satan and restore man's dominion. The main object of Noah's flood was to do away with all the satanic corruption, destroy the giants and preserve the pure Adamic stock as to make good the guarantee of the coming of the seed of woman as in the plan of God. The vision which Isaiah son of Amos saw against Babylon. Lift up a standard on the mountain of the plain Exalt the voice to them, beckon with the hand. Open the gates, ye rulers. I give command, and I bring them. Giants are coming to fulfill my wrath, rejoicing at the same time and insulting. A voice of many nations on the mountains, even like to that of many nations. A voice of kings and nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts has given command to a warlike nation to come from a land afar off, from the uttermost foundation of heaven. The Lord and his warriors are coming to destroy all the world. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is near, and destruction from God shall arrive. Let me read Isaiah 45, 18. This was what turned the, the cogs in my brain on when I understood this 45 years ago. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, there is none else. 
we've well, got a contradiction there between Isaiah 45, 18 and Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2, unless you understand that something took place that resulted in the waste. You can conclude that as originally created, the universe was a, a very beautiful appointed for the purpose of which God brought it into being. It was in fact, as Isaiah says, in no sense created chaos, but formed to be inhabited. The Greek word cosmos, which the New Testament has applied to it, basically means order, or the very opposite of chaos. The concept is comprehended in the Hebrew word translated creation. The creation of mankind, God did something special that obviously drew the jealousy and envy of Lucifer. And Lucifer became Satan. Satan simply means the adversary, and he's known by all different names all over the world. The spiritual war now is for the very identity of men. The ultimate purpose of the spiritual battle is so when Satan can come before the presence of the Lord and say, all flesh is destroyed. There is no human left. And remember, at Noah's flood, the only eight individuals survived. Noah's family were the only ones who hadn't been corrupted. God chose the animals that came on the ark because they were the only pure animals that hadn't been genetically manipulated. The oldest recorded history that I can find pre-flood and also pre-Adam is that the tablets exist talking about fallen angels having sex with animals, the poor animals. But now fast forward. The best definition of lust I know is the appetite of demons expressed through humans. Once again, this idea that the corruption of animals is underway should point to the veracity of the words of Jesus Christ when he said, if those days weren't shortened, there'd be no flesh left alive. And oh, by the way, as, a, as an aside and as a closing couple of comments, the Catholic Church right now is arguing over can aliens be baptized? Well, aliens who are not creating the image and likeness of God are in no different creation. They do not manifest as the sons and daughters of a living God. While the world's attention is focused on all the volcanoes, all the earthquakes, all the floods, all the cosmic uh, solar storms, and all of the different strange judgments facing the earth, people are missing the biggest point, in my opinion, in the world. Your very genetic heritage has come under electromagnetic war. Now the technology of the fallen angels is coming full course to grant to humanity that lie that the devil promised me, ye shall be as gods and ye shall not surely die. Well, guess what? If you're a peon, you're gonna surely die because the elite says only them the top 10% of the world's richest and the most knowledgeable are gonna be allowed to live. The ultimate goal is the end of all humanity. I would think that would be upsetting to everybody who watches this video.